everyone and welcome back to another episode of Irish Country Life. My name is Nikolai and together with Chris and Scooter, today I'm going to be giving you a little treat and showing around our Moroccan inspired hunting porch. Then later we will go for a picnic to a beautiful place that we stumbled across and then join me back at the house where we will be having some Greek forward slash Turkish coffee and some lovely sweet treats. So you guys, here we are in our Moroccan inspired hunting porch and I'm going to give you a little tour around now and show you some bits and pieces that we have in the porch and Scooter is eager to get going. Um, but first of all, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of the house and how we came to purchase the house. So the house was built in 1879 and 22 years ago, I was working in my shop in Enniskillen and we first got our first dial up internet. So I was scrolling through the internet and I stumbled across this beautiful house for sale and I hurried home and I told Chris that we were going to go and view a beautiful house in County Sligo and he was a bit unsure but I told him I'd tell him the details later and so we came and it was late in the evening we made an appointment with the estate agent to come and view the house the next morning where we met the Baroness who greeted us with all her airs and graces. She kindly took us on a wonderful tour around the house that we now know to be ours and we had tea and cake and it was just an amazing experience. She since went off to France and bought herself a beautiful castle in France and that's where she resides to this day. The Baroness was a um, very interesting lady and I do know that she had a boyfriend called Edward Bell who apparently was an artist and I do know that one of one of the ceilings in the bedroom was painted from him and apparently we have some information that he designed two of the album covers for David Bowie who also came to stay here at this very house to help recover from an illness that he had. Now the Baroness used to like to dress up and so she, Chris often referred to her as a little bit like Lady Havisham. She used to like to get full gown, full makeup and come down the stairs in the evening as if she was attending a grand ball and have dinner with her boyfriend in the dining room in the bay window. We don't quite live like that today, but the idea and the thought is very nice. She had many beautiful things in the house of which she took everything with her going to France. The only thing that we managed to retain in the house from the Baroness was the red Axminster carpet, which goes right the way throughout the house, through the hallways, up the staircases and along all the landings. We managed to ask her to sell us that at the time when she was leaving 
as we felt that we would not be able to replicate the quality of this carpet in the future. So I'm now going to show you around the porch and let me talk to you a little bit about some of the things in the porch. And now one of my favorite pieces in the porch is this beautiful Moroccan silver and bone table. This arrived to the shop and when I unpackaged it, I thought that is not going to be sold. That is mine. I'm keeping this. And so I did keep it in the shop for display purposes for a little while, but I had to remove it from the shop because so many people wanted to buy it, but it wasn't going to be sold. As I said, it was mine and I was keeping it and it has stayed here ever since. One of my favorite pieces in the porch. Over the doorway here, we have a beautiful Indian silk panel of a sari material, which again is very beautifully made, heavily beaded and beautiful, beautiful gold thread. And it drapes just beautifully here in the porch. So a lot of people are very intrigued and ask me upon entering where all this collection came from. And the truth is that myself and Chris had a beautiful gift shop many years ago and a lot of this stuff arrived in containers. We would have obviously chosen it at exhibitions and from different suppliers around the world. And when it used to arrive to the shop in the crates, I used to feel like it was Christmas day and I would open the crates and open the containers and start taking pieces out. And I would be saying to myself, well, this is for me and this is for me and this is for me. And so very little actually was for sale. Most of it ended up here at the house some of which is absolutely exquisite. I'll just show you a beautiful bowl in a stunning green with some lovely bone and silver detailing around the edge, which is very hidden and so you can't see it. So I'll take it out so you can have a look closer inspection. So you can see the beautiful green enamel and then you've got the lovely old silver with the bone. Absolutely exquisite pieces of pottery. This is the hand-carved Moroccan sofa that goes with the table. And also, I don't know if you can see, but the leather seat pad is actually hand-painted. And it's a really, really, really lovely bench. On the bench, then we have a selection of what we call marriage cushions. They are old Indian sari wedding dresses, which have been cut and then made into cushions. Everyone is unique, everyone is different. All the beadwork and embroidery and threads on each cushion is very different and the colors are different. Funny, when we had our shop, a lot of people used to come in, fall in love with these cushions, but in Ireland, they used to say, I need five. I need three for my sofa and two for my armchairs. And unfortunately, there is no five of anything. They were all individual cushions. And so each piece has its own story to tell. So let me tantalize your taste buds looking at this beautiful cushion to be able to see the stunning colors and all the beadwork and everything and the amount of work that's gone into this particular cushion. Out of this world. In this porch, we've got two amazing windows, which both have the original shutters. The shutters still work and the windows are sash windows. With still some retaining one or two panels of the original wavy glass. On the top of the shutter on this particular window, which is very unusual because we don't have it in any other part of the house, is the beautiful fan light in the corners. And it really is a wonderful detail to have on the sash windows. And I'll just mention while I'm here, the original bell, which is the doorbell. So we pull it by a lever outside and Scooter will probably come barking now when he hears it thinking his girlfriend Maggie has arrived for a date. Yes, true to form, he's here. Hey, you guys, we've just come out to have a lovely little picnic with our sandwich and our soup. And I stumbled across this laneway and it had a signpost saying Christ Church. So we decided we'd come down the laneway and see what Christ Church is. So we've stumbled across this beautiful church and we're now going to go inside. We're going to have a little wander around. And then I'm going to get the picnic blanket out of the car. I'm going to sit and have our sandwich in these beautiful surroundings. Lovely old Gothic church. It's in an area called Screen, Dramard to be precise. What a beautiful building. 
We're here at the church and we're at the graveyard part. And so this particular tombstone is in loving memory of Garrett Graham, who died on the 16th of March, 1906, aged 66 years. So that's 1906. And then over here, and here we have one that's even older. This is Robert Lindsay, who died in 1901, but his wife died in 1900, and she was 81 and he was 82. So enough about death. It's time now to go and have a nice cup of homemade soup and a lovely sandwich. I said, is this a posh picnic? No. Huh? If it was a posh picnic, we'd have blue and white soup bowls. You could have brought them. I could have brought them, but I didn't have time. He rushed me. We're going to make another video doing afternoon tea and use all our blue and white china. Thanks. More of the next video. <laughs> However, I have to say, even if I do say so, I've got to the mission. We have homemade tea brack with butter. <coughs> It doesn't really need butter on top, does it? They say it's better with butter, <clears throat> so we shall have butter. And now I'm going to have a piece of my delicious homemade tea brack with lashings of butter while Tris cries, Chris tries to make something decent of this video. <laughs> this has been a disaster. <laughs> forward slash Turkish coffee and our little sweet treats and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what we've got here. So we've got our two cups of beautiful Turkish coffee which actually I purchased on my recent travels to Turkey and I like to make it with just a little sugar so it's not quite so bitter. You can make it as sweet as you like. A tradition in Cyprus is once you've finished drinking your coffee that one of the old kujagaris which is the Greek for older ladies would come and read your coffee cup and tell you all things wonderful or depending on where you were situated maybe some very dramatic news. The Greeks are all very dramatic. Here we have what we call a gurabiede. These particular ones were made for a wedding in Cyprus and I went along to the bakery with my wonderful sister-in-law Maria and we ordered 20 so I could bring home. And they are basically a beautiful short crust biscuit shortbread biscuit and inside is filled with wonderful wonderful nuts and rose water and you can see beautiful beautiful biscuit here we have what they call in in greek gligon which is sweet treats so this one here is orange peel so orange peel which has been boiled and soaked in syrup and then preserved in syrup and this one is garadagi which is a fresh walnut so it's not a dried walnut, it's the walnut when it's picked from the tree and it is boiled again with cloves and cinnamon and sugar and water and it is preserved to like a stock syrup. And when you cut into it, you can see the nuttiness of the walnut inside. But they are delicious served with Greek or Turkish coffee. And then traditionally to have with your Greek Turkish coffee, you have a glass of water. And here we have a beautiful bottle of WB Yates water from Tipperary in Ireland. Come on, 
join you enjoy your great coffee Hmm. We're running low on our Greek on. We'll have to when we go to Cyprus stock up. Maria can find somebody who home makes them. What do you want, Scooter? 